what's up guys this is kd cloudy and welcome back to another video after three months um yeah it's been a while but apple's wwdc just got over a couple of days ago and they announced a bunch of stuff ios 16 ipad os 16 mac os ventura and uh, the m2 macbook air it was cool stuff and uh, it was a pretty fun keynote to watch and keeping up with the yearly tradition i was planning to do in like an ios 16 or an iPad OS 16 video like I usually do but this year the feature count is like surprisingly low so I just it just wasn't worth the video <laughs> uh, like the biggest change is basically a new lock screen uh, it's customizable and everything it's not really that customizable if you've used Android before but apart from that there is like literally nothing else worth talking about but the more interesting one is HDR 10 plus support now the kicker here is that this was like not talked about on stage this hasn't been like there is no public information out there except for like one tiny column in apple's website uh it just says apple tv will now support the next generation of high dynamic range video that's about it hdr 10 plus if you don't know already it's like a rival hdr standard to dolby vision and it basically is the same technology with dynamic metadata and support for like up to a 10,000 of brightness and 12-bit or 16-bit color which was made by Samsung and Amazon in a partnership and the Alliance has a bunch more other brands tied to it and for the longest time if you were like a content provider or a display manufacturer you had to pick one of those sides or sometimes both and similarly Netflix one of the biggest streaming services on the planet they chose Toby Vision Amazon Prime, because they literally <laughs> helped create the standard, they chose HDR10+. And similarly, TV brands, they chose Toby Vision, Samsung chose HDR10+. So there's like a sort of a pseudo format war. And I say a pseudo format war because there are companies and display manufacturers who would support both the formats, like Xiaomi, a TV manufacturer, and uh, movie studios would master their films for both the formats, both Toby Vision and HDR10+. And for the longest time, for the past five years, since the introduction of the Apple TV 4K and the iPhone 10, Apple has been on the Dolby side of the train. Because of that, that end of the spectrum has had massive support and massive amounts of adoption. But yeah, Apple embracing the HDR10 Plus format finally is a huge win for the AV industry slash the community. And it's very rare to see Apple embracing an open standard, but they have done it before, they have done they have embraced HTML5 video. Uh, they've also embraced HDR10. And uh, HDR10 Plus, having it on the platform just makes more sense if they want Apple TV as a streaming box to be more mainstream. And if they really want to be serious about their streaming platform, you know, having all the support for all the latest cutting edge formats doesn't hurt, does it? So yeah, it's a win-win for everybody. Um, but again, there is still no clear information about is it Apple TV exclusive only or it, like when is the content on Apple TV gonna come in HDR10 plus. A lot of ambiguity over here and pretty much no official uh, public word from Apple. So I, I did what I usually do. I just dug deep into the rabbit hole and started cold DMing uh, people and uh, like in, in in a hope to just find an answer and I did. Josh Tisbury, who is a media technologies evangelist at Apple in California, uh, he has done several talks on HLS streaming and all that. He seemed like the perfect guy who could, you know, sort of answer my question. So yeah, I just dropped a cold DM and I got a reply. And yeah, it's available. It's gonna be available for all apps. Is going to be updated into the Apple HLS streaming spec. Now, what he means here by HLS spec is HLS is basically HTTP live streaming. It's the Apple's default protocol, which all streaming services have to follow if they want to deliver and stream video onto Apple's client devices, which is iOS, iPad OS, TV OS, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, App Apple has a pretty clear comprehensive documentation as to how uh, the streaming services can format their content and deliver it so that it plays well on Apple's devices and it provides clear documentation about how to handle HDR videos and Dolby Vision videos and soon according to him 
uh, this documentation will also be updated for HDR10 plus content. So we can expect third party streaming services to deliver HDR10 plus onto iOS. Uh, but the bummer is that it's not available just yet. It's gonna drop sometime in the fall. So that's about as official as it can get, right? So that's your little scoop if you want to call it that. Uh, but yeah, HDR10 plus support is basically confirmed and it's gonna be available for all apps. It's gonna be treated exactly like Dolby Vision is. So it's gonna be available for Mac, tvOS and iOS, iPadOS as well throughout the ecosystem. So yeah, what does this mean for you as a consumer? Well, uh, the biggest change I personally hope is that Amazon would freaking fix their horrendous Prime Video app. I mean, I hate that app anyways. I've tweeted countless times about it. It's like decent on Android and Android TV, but on iOS, it buffers in 720p for me on my iPad. Sometimes it would go to 1080p and there is no HDR support. It's all SDR up till now. So if this happens, Amazon might just have a change of heart and maybe deliver HDR10 plus video at least on iPhones and iPads and 4K HDR10 plus videos on the, um, on the Apple TV. I could only hope, um, but yeah, that's gonna be my number one wish list feature once HDR10 plus support drops. Now what it means for Apple TV and uh, like both the box and the app itself is that Boomvi Studios who provide Apple content for rentals and purchases uh, they can sort of update the library with both Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus. So you get best of the both worlds and depending upon what type of television set you have, for example, if, if your Apple TV is hooked up to a Samsung TV, then you can stream HDR10 Plus content right from Apple TV, the app. So that's great. And you know, TV Plus, since Apple is getting a little serious about the streaming business, um, they, they also now have an option like filmmakers and the creatives also now have an option to deliver an HDR10 Plus Master for the original films and the original content. So people with a Samsung TV can enjoy it with dynamic metadata. So that's pretty nice. So yeah, now that I think about it, the people who are benefiting the most out of this are basically Samsung TV owners and diehard Amazon Prime subscribers. Um, so yeah, you can enjoy that content uh, through Apple devices or the Apple TV service. So that's like best of both worlds. Now I did try to download and play an HDR10 plus sample file, like a demo file onto my iPhone. I mustered it into the proper HEVC container and played it on my iPhone and it works. It already works even on iOS 16 beta one. But that's probably because HDR10 plus is like highly backwards compatible. So if it's running on an unsupported display, it's just gonna play the fallback HDR10 layer. And like right now, there's no way to tell if it's actually HDR10 plus or HDR10. Um, but yeah, you know what? We'll wait until the actual support, support for HDR10 plus officially drops in fall. And uh, let's see how it's implemented, how it's implemented across Apple TV plus. Will Amazon decide to update their freaking Prime Video app? We'll see, but until then, we can just hold our breaths. And I'm also excited for macOS Ventura and iPadOS. iPadOS doesn't really have anything uh, for non-M1 iPad, so you could say I'm not really excited for that. But yeah, that's basically it. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, more videos coming soon. If you liked it, uh, please subscribe. Follow me on Twitter if you like to talk about all this stuff. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.